So today we're here with Peter Taff. Peter is the former editor of The Militant and also was the General Secretary of the Socialist Party until 2020. He's now the political uh, secretary. But we're here today particularly because Peter has just uh, published a new book, written a new book, which has come out this month. This is the the last, the most recent, let's put it like that, of the histories of the Socialist Party, which include the rise of militant, also Liverpool, a city that dared to fight, and the previous one to this was called From the uh, Militant to the Socialist Party. So why, Peter, have you decided to produce a new book at this time? Well, because um, it's necessary, uh, not for myself, or the older generation, although we hope as many people as possible will read the book, not just read it, but absorb the lessons that we try to make in this book. And I want to make a, a point very clearly at the beginning. This is not the product of one individual, of one man. It's the collective expression of the hundreds and thousands of working class people, predominantly working class people and others who've gone into the building of uh, the militant and then the Socialist Party as really the most important Marxist, Trotskyist organisation in Britain with an international reputation as well. So from that point of view, we've had two volumes up to now, all of them sold out. We're now on this third volume and I hope that that will sell out as well. In fact, I'm confident given the, the general situation that exists in Britain and internationally, in one of the most disturbed periods from the point of view of class relations in history, that there couldn't be a better time to emphasise and bring out uh, a book of this character, which does not just deal with the struggles in Britain, but the struggles internationally. And I want to emphasise again, to underline the point, this is not just a product of myself. It is the collective experience. Many people went into participating and making this, this book possible, possible, all the full-timers, the executive committee. I want a special reference to be made to my wife and partner, Linda Taff, who made a great contribution in pushing me to develop this book and participating in the, 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 uh, in the, uh, the material and so on, and checking and discussing and so on. And that applies to all the members of the executive committee. So, it's a book that I think deserves the widest circulation, not because I wrote it, that's not the point. In a certain sense, it was written by the collective actions of the Socialist Party members and the working class. This is not just a history of militants and the Socialist Party, it's a history of the working class of Britain, but it's also a history of the international working class. That's why we emphasize the struggle for world socialism. To be quite frank about it, and modest if you like, people will read this book and wonder how we got the time to travel the world and participate in the British Labour movement and also develop the international significance of socialism and Marxism. That's why we've called this book The Struggle for World Socialism. I might not be around, but I'm confident that the next generation and the generation of that will build out of the chaos of capitalism, pandemic capitalism, out of this they will build a new and wonderful society of struggle, of solidarity and of socialism. Brilliant. And do you want to give people watching this a little t taste of some of the issues that are covered in this period of this book? Because I think it starts just after the world economic crisis, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And it covers the world economic crisis in quite a lot of detail. And not just like the current crisis, but an analogies and the comparisons with the crises of the past and what it means to the present generation. Because if we're going to build a powerful socialist working class and other participants from other classes who abandon, if you like, the false ideas of capitalism and decide to join in with the wave of history, because that's what it represents, then you have to have an understanding of the workings of capitalism. Because on that basis, you can propose an alternative of what represents genuine 
democratic socialism, not Stalinism, which is a caricature of, of the socialism, represents a departure from the glorious um, model of Marx, of Engels, of Lenin, of Trotsky, of a planned economy, but with democracy at all levels, election of all officials, right of recall, the kind of things that we demand in the British Labour movement, our job is to prepare the ground for the establishment of a new society, a completely new society, not confined to national barriers, but developing in a confederation of Europe, for instance. Or look at the chaos in South Africa at the present time, or Africa as a whole. It's the lost continent again, or of Asia for that matter, with the exception perhaps of China. And then we have the monstrous remnants of the former Stalinist regime, an element of state capitalism in China. That doesn't represent the future or what socialism were meant by Karl Marx and so on. Socialism is liberating, it's democratic, it frees the potential of humankind and particularly of the new generation in the remaking of the world on this basis. So from that point of view, I would welcome all comments. If you disagree, read the book. If you disagree with, with the book, let us know and we will enter into a dialogue and a discussion with you. But it's first and foremost a handbook, if you like, for the members of the Socialist Party and our close collaborators and the wider circulation of workers. We, right from the beginning, from the first day that I was involved in a battle back in Liverpool, many, as many more years than I, I care to remember at the present time, we were motivated by this powerful urge to develop the power of the working class through socialism and democracy, not just in Birkenhead, my own town, or my hometown, or in Liverpool, or in England, or in Britain for that matter, but worldwide. And we found enormous resonance with these ideas. But the best days for us, the Socialist Party, and the Committee for the Workers International lies ahead in the enormous conquest for socialism and so on. And I'm, I'm proud to have played a role with my comrades, friends and my family. And I repeat again with comrade Linda Taff, with our comrades, who've, our, our children who participated in the Socialist Party. There's nothing more rewarding than this struggle that we've been involved in. And we've been vindicated by the chaos of capitalism. Now we have to build the foundation stones, the bricks and the mortar, of a new house, if you like, of a new international and a new world if it comes to that. This book, it deals with many things that are relevant to workers and young people moving into struggle today. It deals with the struggle in the trade unions. It deals with youth movements that took place in the aftermath of the world economic crisis. And it deals with the uh, period of Corbynism uh, from 2015 to 2019. Absolutely, sir. That makes it relevant to every working man and woman or youth who is questioning the foundations of this rotted system. They are failing to deliver the goods. And therefore, it's not just a comment on, on, on events. It's also exploring the strategy, the tactics of the Socialist Party and where, if you like, there's been a certain mistakes made or even an overcorrection, then we deal with that, we think, in an honest way. You have to be honest with the working class. We've got a clean banner. You have to be absolutely honest. And we've broken with people who departed from that banner, who, for instance, have, have, uh, have, 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 have adopted a kind of divisive policy, such as um, identity politics and so on. Look at the, the way that we fought a struggle internally and externally in our ranks. We deal with that. We touch on that, at least in this book. We've been vindicated because the identity politics came from the ideological factories of the capitalists in America, taken up internationally, taken up by Boris Johnson. But now, in the, in the present, uh, the recent European Cup has been forced to backtrack on that under weight of the powerful impetus that's been given against the ideas of racism or of division. Even the Fabian Society has now come out in, in really vindicating the position that we've taken. So we have to remain true. So what socialism, democracy and international represents? 
And finally, Peter, I just want to say, you've written the book, we've produced the book. Why should people read the book? And is there anything else that they should do other than reading the book? Well, buy the book. Even more important, go out and sell the book. It might be a bit of a hard sell with the weight it is. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of um, uh, help in, in relation to this. Don't leave it on a high shelf because it's so thick it might do you injury if it falls off. But the ideas contained in the book, I hope, will have a much beneficial effect on your head, on your brain, than the book on a high shelf. So go out and sell the book. Read the book first of all. Know what you're selling. I mean, it, it links up with our paper. There's a tremendous wealth of material in the current issues of the socialist. I mean, it's tremendous material. There's a very good article by a young worker in this issue. There's a very good article by Dave Nellist on the issue of Terry Fields and brought, brings back memories to us. Practically every page of this paper, it's, it's really commendable and a credit to the editors and others. And the, the editor who's brought this this paper out. We are complementing that by standing back and drawing a balance sheet. If I was going to make one general point, it's a balance sheet of the last phase of the work of the Socialist Party and the Committee for the Workers International. We are not the international yet. In the name, we say we are the committee for an international and we're prepared to collaborate and develop a powerful basis for that in all kinds of organisations, some of which have not yet moved into struggle. That's why we put South Africa on the front page. I visited South Africa at least twice in the early days and in the relatively recent period. Alec Thraves has visited South Africa. They've visited Britain. That's what we're all about, the common struggle of the working class worldwide. It's the most powerful force on this planet. It's a force for change. And we hope in our own way, in our own little way, it's, although it's a big book, that, that this book can play a role in arming, the, uh, politically arming, these new layers of the working class for the coming struggle. OK, thank you very much for watching this. And as Peter said, read it, absorb it, discuss it, read and subscribe to the Socialist newspaper and join the Socialist Party. Join the real struggle, the serious struggle for a socialist change in the world today.